In Tameside, near Manchester, senior practitioner Liz Curry is arriving for another day in Denton's children's social work team. After starting her career in the voluntary sector, Liz has been with the Tameside team since 2008. Coming to Tameside, because of the way that we work here, we don't have a separate duty team, we don't have a separate looked after team. The area team does everything and I wanted that very steep learning curve and I wanted to get experience of all the different areas. I like that style of working where you take something right from the beginning and follow it all the way through and build up those relationships with your children and your families. Liz can have around 20 or 30 children on her caseload at any one time. Today's shift starts with a voicemail from a 12-year-old boy living in a children's home. He's unhappy and wants to leave. It's Liz's role to try to listen and to manage the problem. It may mean reinforcing the boundaries the young person needs to follow. He's struggling there at the moment because a new young person has moved into that children's home and he's, he's really struggling to adjust to that. Generally, when he rings me up, it's because he's not getting his own way. And he's kind of hoping that I will change whatever decision has been made. What's up? What's been happening? Now, if you need some time out of that situation, you can go off down the park or whatever and then come back at an agreed time. He wasn't entirely happy with me. He did put the phone down on me, I think, a couple of times, which he tends to do when he doesn't hear something that he wants. I spoke to him, spoke to staff to work out what was happening and what rules they were putting in place for him because equally we need to kind of support what they're doing but make sure he understands what they're doing but also find a way out of that situation so that he and staff aren't, at, you know, he isn't winding, winding them up and getting annoyed and they're not having to manage that all morning. With the situation stabilised, Liz will keep in close contact with the staff and the young person to try to ensure the placement can continue but her next case can't be dealt with over the phone. She's received a referral from another professional whilst on duty around suspicions that a 12-year-old boy with learning difficulties may be involved in sexual activity and substance abuse. We need to know where the parents, where the parents know about that and what the supervision level is for the child. Um, also, having spoken to the child, he was very clear that there's a lot of people living in the house at the moment, there's a lot of arguing going on at the moment, and he's not actually very happy living there. Liz and family support worker Paul Wayne need to do a home visit to investigate their concerns. I think what we'd like to happen is um, to be able to sit down and have a discussion with mum and dad about where they feel things are up to with the child at the moment. Um, how they think they're getting on in terms of supervising him, whether he's sticking to boundaries, because that's been a problem in the past. We need to, to establish whether or not they can supervise him adequately and whether they would understand what the risks would be of not supervising him. Visiting children and families in the community is a crucial part of their child protection work. Ideally, we don't want to do unannounced visits because obviously it's quite disruptive and rude to the people that you're visiting. It's just have social workers banging on the door. But equally, if there's a concern that's been raised by another agency about the child, then we will do unannounced visits. Hiya. I'm Liz from Children's Social Work Team. Hello. You're right. This is Paul. I think home visits are one of the most useful parts of the job in terms of engaging families and in terms of assessing and understanding what's happening. I think the situation when you get you know some people to come into the office and talk to you. It's a totally false situation and you're not getting a true picture, you're just getting what they want you to know. Whereas if you see them at home, you're seeing them dealing with things that they can't particularly control all the time. The understanding of what it feels like to be that child, what, what experiences of being parented is this child having? You know, what, what's their life like day to day? As with many unannounced visits, it can provoke a strong reaction towards the social workers. Went in and, and, and spoke to Mum. Um, she was, she, I think she she was a bit upset. Um, she called Dad in, and he was he really was upset. yeah he was really upset. He was quite quite angry. He struggled to stay in the room because he was he was feeling quite angry. So he went out. But Mum stayed and talked to us. She's agreed for you know a worker to spend a bit of time with him, um, and work out what what his wishes and feelings are, what what his view is of, of what if anything has happened. With at least one parent open to support, Liz will ensure the family receive the correct help to put effective supervision in place. Back in the office, Liz rushes into a multi-agency meeting about a separate case. The teenage boy is causing concern. 
the difficulty, I think, is that everyone has a lot of concerns, but no one has a lot of evidence about the concerns. So you get quite a lot of people being worried about the child and saying things like, well, I think this is happening, but nobody knows. The youth offending team have expressed some concerns about what's going on for this child at the moment. Um, and we're looking at, going to look at what information they have, whether it's information we've had before or not, what the basis of that information is. It's a case Liz knows well, and despite the lack of evidence, her experience and intuition always told her that something was not quite right. Effective social workers need to apply professional scepticism to cases like this. Mum says exactly the right things, and I have no reason to disbelieve her other than I have a feeling that she's not telling me the truth or that she's telling me the party line. But, you know, if you get a pet, some parents have got years and years of experience of working with the system and getting rid of professionals, and they're very good, and she is very good. You know, I'm not disputing for a second her skills at getting rid of me. She's excellent at that. I think my intuition has held this case open, actually. I think we could quite easily have said several years ago, they're not engaging, let's, let's shut it. New police information supporting her intuition is revealed in the meeting and Liz believes she may need to escalate the case into a formal child protection conference. First, she must discuss the evidence with team manager Tracy Rowe. We've got a lot of new information from police that I wasn't aware of. Police say that Mum spends a lot of time in the evening in the pub. They're saying they have been round and she's been intoxicated. I think we are supported really well. I think one of the things I really like about this authority is the high level of support and the opportunities for discussing things. I read something saying that, you know, all intuition is bias. To some extent it is. So I said, if you have an intuition, as a worker, as a professional, you have a responsibility to examine that and think about, you know, what am I reacting to here? And working with managers can help you explore some of that. There's very few facts. You know, you're on the hypothesis, you're on the, well, I've got this information that leads me to think this. And that doesn't mean that I believe that thing 100%. That means at the moment my information leads up this way. And there's a possibility that I might be wrong. There's always a possibility that I might be wrong. Yeah. Team manager Tracy agrees that Liz should consult the conference team to take the case forward, as the new evidence clearly supports her initial concerns. You don't sort of just pull it from thin air. It's your years of experience, it's your training, it's your knowledge. You may not be able to put your finger on what it is that's not quite right, but you sort of know it's something that you do sort of, um, I guess you get more confident to rely on and you get more confident on looking for what is it that's not, not feeling right. The majority of the time when people say it's not quite right, usually it isn't right. And when they explore with other professionals, they talk to other agencies, our health, education, it sort of backs up that sort of feeling, really. After lunch at her desk, typing up the morning's notes, Liz is back on the phone in the afternoon, dealing with various children, professionals and foster carers. A teenage girl on Liz's caseload is struggling in a new placement. The foster carer is concerned about how to deal with contact with an older sibling. It's Liz's role to provide ongoing advice and support for the foster carer to ensure the safe care of the child. She's not supposed to see her sister unsupervised at the moment because of the concerns about who her sister's associating with. She could put her in contact with people that are inappropriate and people that could sexually harm her, sexually exploit her. We're not convinced that she'd be safe and our responsibility is to keep her safe. Now if she goes against that and runs off to see her sister then you need to report her missing. I think she's a really good foster carer with younger children but I think she does struggle with teenagers and you know the young person's quite a difficult challenging teenager. We can't have the young person that's in our care, you know, put at risk like that. So we need to keep her safe, which we have explained to this young person, but equally, you know, she's not that fond of boundaries and she tends to kind of challenge, so she may well challenge that. It's now mid-afternoon and Liz is back on the road on her monthly home visit to 14-year-old looked-after child Paige. A month ago, Paige briefly ran away from her foster carers. Liz has been working with Paige for two and a half years and wants to make sure these current issues have been resolved. She wasn't very happy last time I saw her. She was fine by the time the visit ended, but she was quite... Things were disrupting a bit at the time, so I needed to go and, need to go and see her and see how she's been since then, see how everything's been going for her. Hello. Come in. Thank you. Last time I saw her, she had just had the, the blip. It was the day, the day when she'd come back from, from doing a runner. I need to see how it's been since she got back, you know. How is she feeling? Is she still happy in the placement? 
You know, is she still having feelings about wanting to leave? Because sometimes she does, and I think that's natural. I also think, particularly teenage years, quite difficult, and quite a lot of teenagers don't want to be here anymore. But when you've got the option of not having to be there anymore, that kind of magnifies it, makes it worse. I saw your mum the other day. Did you? Yes. Have you spoken to her recently? Um, found her. Yeah. When I stayed at her house that night, she only had, like, Coke and um, cream soda on the side. She weren't drinking. Yeah. Which is just good. pretty good. But overall, you've been getting on right with Maria and Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Made friends of her. Good. Yeah, fine. Good. She was 11 the first time I met her. She's gone from being a quite sulky, quite difficult young lady into she's absolutely brilliant now, you know, she's lovely. Just brilliantly at school, does really, really well. You know, she's working above average, teachers love teaching her, 100% attendance, participates in lots of activities, you know, wants to go to college. She's great, she's done so well. The change in her is amazing. I've known her for about two and a half years, I think. Um, and at first, when I first got put in care, I didn't like her at all because I thought it was her fault and she was saying that my mum was a bad mum and all that, but I think now I've actually grown up, I can understand where she's coming from when she says that my mum, like, she's not a bad mum, but she couldn't look after us, I understand now. Part of, like, my assessment when I go isn't just what she's telling me verbally, it's what she's telling me with her behaviour and what, you know, what, how she appears. It's, it's nice when she's in a good mood and she seems really settled. Um, she was clear that, you know, she's, she's getting on really well with the carers at the moment, that the blip we were having last time was just a blip and that's fine now and she's moved on from that. Having ended the visit on a positive note, Liz returns to the office to write up her case notes. Her job can be filled with emotional highs and lows and she's constantly aware of her responsibilities to the children and families that she serves. Taking children into care is an extremely difficult thing to do. And I think that's right. I think it should be. I think it should have an emotional impact on you and you should question it. It's never a decision that I would make. You know, it's a decision that we make in consultation with managers and senior managers and the legal department. It's very final and it's, you know, the courts describe it as a very as a draconian measure and it is. And seeing how distressed the parents are, you know, it is upsetting. It really is upsetting. Yeah. I like it when children start to trust you and I also like it when you can see good outcomes for children, you know, when you can see them, perhaps, you know, things change within their family and, and they're a lot happier at home or, you know, they're settled in foster placements and they're a lot happier there. And when you see a child that's gone from, say, having, you know, kicking off at school all the time, terrible school attendance, and then you see them perhaps living in, in a foster placement and wanting to go to school every day and thinking about a career and thinking about a future, and you think, well, if they'd, actually, if that child stayed at home, that wouldn't have happened. And the fact that now they've got more choices is because of something that we've done. The other thing that I really like is how well everyone gets on as a team. I think, you know, our team is really close and supportive. We get on really well with people from other agencies. And it's actually a really nice atmosphere to work in, and I really like that. <laughs>